Hello, my Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, today's video is our April Scrap Happy Crochet Along pattern. And what we're doing today is we're just using up our scraps to make this double sided hot pad. And the neat thing about this fun square is it is an eight inch square and you can use it for anything. You can make hats, you can make scarves, use it for a pocket on a sweater, blankets, afghans, lots of different things, cowls, I could go on and on, bags, that you can use this adorable flower mitered granny square. And the other thing about it is, although I've made it into an eight inch, you can continue on and make it bigger. Or if you just want a small square, you can use it smaller, depending on what you're gonna make with it. And so it's a really versatile pattern. We have this fun little spring flower, and then we make our square, and then we just start going back and forth on it until it's as big as we want. And of course, I wanted it to be an eight inch, so when we add the trim, it ends up being about a nine inch hot pad. And we take two of our squares, and we put them together, and I did one where the flower was at the top, and the other side, the flower's at the bottom, so you get a neat look on both sides. It's a really fun and easy project and a great way to use up your scraps. You can find the complete pattern on my blog with lots of pictures and as always I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. Oh, and just a reminder, I'll also put that link to the playlist on YouTube that has all of the scrap happy crochet patterns that we've done for our 2022 crochet along. Let's talk about the yarn. Now, if you're going to use this hot pad or pot holder as a decoration, acrylic yarns are just fine, or any fiber for that matter, as long as it's a medium weight number four yarn. If you're going to use it as an actual hot pad, meaning putting something hot on it or pulling something off the stove or from the oven with it, you're going to need to use a cotton yarn because acrylic yarns melt and that can burn your hand or the surface that you're putting it on. For today's demonstration, I'm using these four cottons from my stash. Um, I think this one is from Walmart. This is a premier cotton. This is peaches and cream, and I don't know what cotton this is. They're all medium weight number four, and it's a good idea to try to stay within the same fiber so that once you wash your hot pad, it doesn't pucker up on you differently. But I'm going to be using these four colors. Now, you can use as many colors as you want to. Just keep in mind, the more colors you use, the more ends you're gonna have to weave in. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in ends, and then of course, a pair of scissors. We're going to be starting with the small square, the flower, and then making the other square, and then doing the mitered corners. All right, so we're going to begin with one color. Your color choices are totally up to you. We're going to chain five. We'll put the tail of our yarn over our hook and pull that through. And then we'll tie that little stay knot so our circle doesn't come undone. And if you want to do the magic circle or another method of making your circle, that's totally fine. We're going to go in, pull up a loop, and st stitch a chain one. Now we're going to stitch 12 single crochets in this chain five loop. So we'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. So there's one, two, three, four, five, whoops, <laughs> and six. Scrunch those around so we can fit all 12 in there seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, and 12. Now you will notice that I stitched over that tail of yarn and that's so I can pull that and close up that hole. All right, so we're gonna join to our first single crochet with a slip stitch. And we're not going to chain three because we're going to be changing colors, but this is how it should look. Now you're gonna turn it over, pull that string of yarn, and we'll go ahead and just weave that in. <laughs> That'll be one less weave in that we'll have to do. And you can wait to the end of your project to do this if you want to. All right, let's try that again. This particular yarn is just a little bit splitty. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna go around and let me move my crochet hook out of the way. And make sure that hole is closed. I came unthreaded, let's do that again. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and clip that and so for round or row one, we have 12 single crochets. Now for row two, I've gone ahead and cut my yarn because I'm going to change colors. I'm going to do my petals in this pink, light pink. There we go. And what we're going to be doing on this row is stitching in the front loops only. So you'll see a row of loops here and a row of loops here. Your front loops are the loops that are facing you. Your back loops are the loops that are facing away. On this row, we're going to be stitching our flower petals on the front loops only. So we'll go in the next stitch. We'll stitch a slip stitch and chain two. Now we'll go in the front loop of our next single crochet and stitch three double crochets. One, two and three. We'll chain two and slip stitch in the next stitch. So there's our first petal. If you look on the back, you'll see those back loops that we didn't stitch in and we're going to stitch in those on the next row. All right, so let's do that again. We'll slip stitch in the next stitch, front loop only, chain two, then we'll stitch three double crochets in the next front loop. Chain two, one and two, and then slip stitch in the next stitch. So now I have two petals and see the back there where we have those stitches we didn't stitch in. And now we'll repeat this two more times so that we have four petals. I completed those last two petals. So I have four petals. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut my pink and I'm going to bring in my next color. And of course, you could make this all in one color if you want to. Snug that down. Now we're going to be working in the back loops. I'm gonna make a little chain one just to make sure everything is snug down. All right, so we're gonna turn this over and we're gonna go right in that first, move those strings out of the way. That's the most complicated part of this is getting those strings out of the way. All right, we're gonna go right in that back loop, the first one. We're gonna chain three. Get some more yarn out here. We're going to double crochet in that same loop. We're gonna chain one and then stitch two double crochets in that same loop. And what we're doing here is forming the corners. So our chain three counts as our first. 
Then we stitched a double crochet, so that's two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. And so that formed our first corner. We're going to skip the next two and go in that next back loop and stitch our second corner. So we're going to stitch two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Then we'll skip the next two and repeat that. And we'll repeat it two times so that we have four corners. And yes, those back loops might be just a little bit snug. All right, so we're going to skip two, make a corner, skip two, make a corner, and then we'll have two stitches left, and then we'll join back to our chain three. So I stitched those last two corners. I joined to my chain three. We're going to slip stitch in that next double crochet and then slip stitch in that chain one space. And again, we're going to cut our yarn. Now, also, you don't have to change colors here. It's totally up to you. But just so that you see how it looks, we do have those ends that need to be weaved in. But this is our four corners. And then if you turn it over to the front, our flower petals are in the front loops and our square is stitched in the back loops. All right? All righty. So now we're going to bring in our next color. And again, it's up to you how often you change your colors or if you want to make it all in one color. All right, we're going to do row four. Now I push the petal forward so I can see the chain one space. We're going to go in. Chain three, that counts as one double crochet. We're going to double crochet, chain one, and stitch two double crochets, one and two. So we stitched our corner, two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Now we're going to stitch a double crochet in these next two double crochets, one and two. Oops, there we go. We'll stitch one double crochet in the chain one space. Now we'll stitch one double crochet in the two double crochets. One and two. And that brings us to our corner. So we'll stitch two double crochets, one, two, chain one, and one and two. All right, so we stitched one double crochet in the two double crochets. We stitched one double crochet in the chain one space one double crochet in the two double crochets, and then in the corner, two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. And we'll repeat this on these three sides. One double crochet in the double crochets and chain one space, and then our corners on these three sides. I completed row four. We have our four corners of two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets, and then five double crochets on each side. All right, so here's my last of my five. I'm going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch, then we'll slip stitch in that next double crochet, and then slip stitch in the chain one space. There we go. Now I'm going to be changing colors again, so I'm clipping my yarn. I'm going back to the first color that I started with, which is green. And again, you don't have to change colors here if you don't want to. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And we're going to turn so that we're working across this top of our row. 
and we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. We're beginning our mitered rows. We'll stitch one double crochets in each of the double crochets across till we reach that chain one space. All right, so let's take a look at what we just did. Instead of stitching a corner here, we just did a chain three and then one double crochet in each of those double crochets across. Now we're to the chain one space and we'll stitch a corner. That is again, two double crochets chain one and two double crochets. All right, so now we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. And when we reach that corner, we're just going to stitch one double crochet. All righty, almost there. All right. So now we're at the chain one space and we're just going to stitch one double crochet. And that is how row five should look. We're not stitching on these two sides. We're going to be stitching up and over and then we'll change colors or not if you don't want to change colors. And then we'll be turning back and forth like this. So I'm changing colors. I'm going to bring in the blue. Little strings out of the way there. And chain three. We're going to turn. We're going to not stitch in this first stitch because our chain three counts as our first. And so we'll stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across until we reach that chain one space. So I have stitched one double crochet in each of those double crochets across. Our chain three counted as one, so we have 12. Now we're to the corner, we're going to stitch two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets, one and two. And then again, we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. I completed that row across. We have 12 double crochets, our corner, and 12 double crochets. And so now what you'll do is you'll continue to repeat going back and forth. You'll increase two double crochets on each side every row. If you're going to make the size that I made, which is an eight inch square, you're gonna do this two more times. But if you wanna make it bigger, or you don't want it any bigger, then you don't have to. Just continue to repeat row six two more times if you want the eight inch square. I completed those two additional rows and I'm really loving how the pastel is looking for this hot pad. All right, so now I'm going to bring in the color that I want to use for my solid row of double crochet around my hot pad. So I'm going to bring in my green. There we go. And in this double crochet, we're going to chain three. We're going to stitch a double crochet. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to stitch two double crochets. So what we did here is we formed a corner. 
and that's all stitched in that first double crochet. Now we're going to stitch one double crochet and each of the double crochets across like we've been doing. So I placed one double crochet in each of the double crochets across and now I'm at the corner and again we're going to do the corner exactly the same. Two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. One and two. And now what we're going to do is just stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across till we reach that last double crochet. I placed one double crochet in each of the double crochets across until I reached that last double crochet. And in this last double crochet, we're going to make it into a corner. So we're going to stitch two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. I'll pull that, make sure that's snug down nicely. Now we're going to do the sides just a little bit different and I've just been tucking those ends in for now because it is a lot of weaving in. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to make sure you have 17 double crochets across until you reach your chain one space. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and so we'll put the others in here. So we want to stitch eight double crochets in this section here and then we'll place one in each of these nine, okay? So we'll go in the side of the stitch. There we go. One, two, Three, four, five. So I've got eight stitches, and now I have the nine I can work with, and that will get me seventeen stitches. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so that gives me seventeen double crochets across. That brings me to my chain one space, and we'll stitch our corner which is again two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets, one and two. And then we'll just repeat across this side what we did over here. We'll place one in each of those nine and then we'll place eight more evenly across that small section and then join back to this chain three. So I stitched those 17 double crochets up the side and we're going to join to the chain three where we started, slip stitch in the next double crochet, and then slip stitch in the chain one space. We'll cut our yarn and weave that in. And I would give you advice to flip it over and weave in all your ends at this time with your needle. And then if you're going to make this into a hot pad, you'll need to make two of these squares. If you're gonna make it into a blanket, you're gonna need a bunch more. <laughs> so I completed this square, got it all tidied up, and here's my other one. And I'm gonna put these two together. Even though they don't match, I think it's gonna be super fun. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put them with the right sides out 
and I want one of them to be at the top and one to be at the bottom. So we're going to go like this. This flower will be at the top. This one will be at the bottom. Right sides out. And it depends on how you want it to hang, but I like them to hang this way. And so we're going to join our yarn up here at the top. So we're going to join our yarn through both the front and the back with our right sides out. And whatever color you choose for your trim is up to you. And we'll be joining them together by going through both sides and stitching a row of single crochets. This going through the front stitch and the back stitch. And that's why it was important on these sides that didn't have um, stitches to make sure we had the same amount of stitches on each side. And so we'll just work our way down going through the front stitches and the back stitches, stitching them together with single crochets. Now, if it doesn't come out the same, maybe one side stretched a little, you may have to ease it in a little, but it'll all work out in the end if you have the right amount of stitches on each side. I stitched down the side and when I got to this corner, I didn't add any extra stitches. I just went right around the corner and it made a nice rounded corner. So I stitched all the way around, putting the front and the back together with the right sides facing out, and it makes a nice thick hot pad. And so the last thing we're going to do is just add a hanger so we can hang it up. So we're going to chain 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We'll join right back to that same single crochet where we joined back. We're going to do a little chain one. And we want this to be a good sturdy hanger. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch 14 single crochets around. So one, two, three, four, five. I single crocheted 14 single crochets around that chain and we're going to join right in that next stitch with a slip stitch and cut our yarn and then we'll weave those in. We'll just grab our needle and weave both of these ends in and then our hot pad, our scrap happy granny square hot pad and pot holder is ready to be used and i love that this one is different on either side <laughs> here are the two completed double layer hot pads this one is acrylic for decoration this one is cotton to put hot or even cold things on and I love how they turned out. These are a great way to use up your leftover scraps. And they make great gifts. Get in your scraps, make some up, put them in your stash of gifts. And then when somebody has a birthday or a housewarming party, you can put these together with some other things and make a nice gift. So that's our Scrap Happy Granny Square pot holder and hot pad and you can use this square for lots of other things as well.